Okay, you guys, will you talk for me for a second? Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the welcome to the vlog. This case stones and that's very nice, Ryan. <laughs> I'm really proud of it. Yeah, that? you should be. I'm too and Juliet. Oh yeah, Juliet soon. I love that. Okay, you guys. Um, so this is the show. Well, I just like to start rolling. Great. You know what I mean? I feel like you guys need no introduction, but I usually do one just at the beginning. So Michael Yuri, Ryan Spawn, we know them. Actors, they're cool. So I'm just <laughs> going to give like a little intro about how I met you guys. Sure. They live in my building. <laughs> <laughs> the lobby. The, the lobby. <laughs> so when I found out that they lived here, I got a piece of printer paper wrote a little note, I believe in cursive, and <laughs> slipped it under the door. Anyways, here we are, because you guys agreed to do a YouTube video with me. Yeah. It was so fun getting mail under the door. Yeah, it was the sweetest thing. <laughs> when we were looking at like who lives in this building, it also said Sarah Silverman lives here. Not the Sarah Silverman, it's just a person <laughs> named Sarah Silverman. <laughs> Wait, I was like, how did I miss that I know, the last every, eight years? Every day we'd like get ready to, for the lobby. Just yeah. like, who's here, who's here, she's gonna be here. And yeah. then we're like, it's not the Sarah Silverman. It's, but then uh, shortly after we moved here, Larry Storch yes, from F Troop. He passed away. I know. He lived here. He was on F Troop, this little TV show, and he, he lived here and he died. Okay, wait, so I'm curious, because you guys actually had like a really busy last year when most people didn't. Like you did Marry Me, Spam A Lot, you have Maestro, American Horror Story. So I was wondering if we could like kick it off with telling like a fun little anecdote about from one of them. About and the I'm, strike. Well, <laughs> the strike. strike. Well, I was going to say, because I saw you in the lobby the other day and you yeah. said that you had something to say about Maestro. Because I was like, Maestro is fantastic. Oh. And you were going to tell me a little story about Bradley Cooper. He was very cool. Um, so I had this little part in Maestro. I played Jerome Robbins. I mean, it's one scene. Fantastic, though. Like, stands out. Thank you. And I got the audition, and I was like, I thought they already finished making that movie. And they said, oh, no, they're going back into production. Um, they're adding some stuff. I think they're reshooting some things. And um, the, the role is Jerome Robbins, which is like, you know, an iconic yeah. person yeah. in the history of dance and musical theater and um, one of Bernstein's greatest collaborators. Yeah. They made West Side Story, yeah. among other things. And so I thought, there's not a mic, there's not, there's, there's, there's not um, a, a Robbins and Maestro yet. Yeah. Um, holy crap. And then I was like, did someone get fired? But no, it turned out there was no Robbins in Maestro. And now, of course, now that I've seen the movie, I realize it's not really about his work. Right. Certainly, certainly not about, um, that's, that's not the focus of the movie. The focus is his family and his, really his relationship with his wife. Um, but anyway, so I had this Zoom audition with the casting director. Shana Markowitz. I yes. love her so much. She's, she's so supportive and like the best. She's awesome. Yeah. She's awesome. On Zoom. Yeah. Wait, that's wild. Wait, did Zoom. you dance? Oh, oh right. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Like it was against the wall with the books. No. Uh, no, it was in the corner, the, the closet. Anyway. So <laughs> I, <laughs> for those of you who have not seen her apartment. <laughs> not in the, not in the, uh, no, I didn't no, no, think it was in the, the corner. Oh, in the corner of the bedroom. Yeah, by the closet. Oh. And, um, and I, and, and, and she was in like her in-law's house in the Hamptons or something like it was one of those like, where are you? Where are you? You know, yeah. remember Zoom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, um, this is very cool. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. What do we do? What do you do? And she's like, I'll read with you. No big deal. And um, the only like real instruction was that it said, it said that Ro in the script, it said Robbins is sitting on a piano bench like a cat. Oh. Which is not. Wait, I love that description. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is not in the movie. No. And that's not what happened. That's not what happened in the movie. But so I like pulled up a bench and that we had. wheeled in a piano. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of sat and I made sure that like my screen, uh, like my angle had my legs and yeah. I was sitting like a cat. Um, and I read with, with, with the casting director and then I forgot about it. Like, yeah. you know, like we do. Yeah. Like we it's like on to the next. Try to, so try to, yeah. don't, don't focus on that thing that maybe I will or won't get. And, and then I got it and. 
It was a moment where I was, they were like, they, they, they like you for it. They're just like running it up flagpoles, making sure people blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, and then I got it. And so I had a fitting one day. I went back another day and had like an hour and a half session with Tim Monick, who was the dialect coach. Oh my God. Who basically does everything with Bradley now. Okay. He's like Bradley's dialect guy. Okay. And so I spent, you know, I have like four lines in the movie, but I spent all this time with Tim, which was really cool. Yeah. Because I had known about Tim because um, he is, the book that, that we use at Juilliard for speech and stuff is called Speak with Distinction, Edith Skinner's book. Yeah. But he's the one who put the book together. Wow. And he taught at Juilliard. And um, so I didn't have him. I didn't even know that. And I went to Juilliard and I had that book. <laughs> Tim Monick. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wait, that's wild. So when he's doing those four lines, does he focus on those four lines specifically? Yeah. Yeah, we focus on or those four lines. We talked about other things. You know, we talked, it was a lot of, we also, Kiki, you know, there was a lot of like just chatting. Yeah. Because we had people in common. And I was really interested in his work. Yeah. Um, Tim's, I mean. And, but but yeah, we focus on those lines. And, 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 and then he had me say other things. Um in the sort of dialect of Robbins. There's some, you know, there's very little of Robbins talking, certainly very little of him talking as a young man. He was in his late 20s when this takes place. Both of them are. Um, and then and then they were like, okay, Bradley would like to have a rehearsal. And so they the brought... The thought of a rehearsal and like film, yes. have fun. Yes, and so oh. I went and I get there and... Uh, Matt Bomer's there, and Greg. I think Greg was there. Greg Hildreth, who's also in the scene, and um, a couple of crew people. But they were shooting something else. But Bradley was in costume, wow, in makeup, in hair. He was shooting as young as young Lenny. Yeah, and he was kind of in character. Oh my god! He was sort of like, all right, here we go. This is you know, he was kind of doing, and, and we rehearsed. Really, he was really cool. He called me Jerry. Love that. We rehearsed a bit, <laughs> and then the next day or a couple days later, I came back and we shot. And again, he—I never saw him out of character. Yeah, not really, not yeah. really. I mean, he was—he's directing the movie. I mean, I think that is wild, especially considering yeah. how like involved that character is. Yeah. To be able to like get out of it, to be like action, cut, whatever, and right. Just, or did he call action and cut as himself? As he, I would imagine once he puts that whole thing on, it would be hard to to not be to not do it. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he called action. I oh, think did somebody he else called action. Okay, and there wasn't really a cut. It's like I'm just I just am. I just am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was kind of like this is it. It's already happening. Like it was. Right. There was a sense of like there was no real beginning, no real end. The scenes were just. I mean, there was Keep a going. little bit, but yeah. And then sometimes it would continue. Um, there was a, there was one where, you know, we would, we would just keep talking Yeah. and I was getting, and in the scene I'm getting on him because he's becoming this famous conductor and I'm like, I need you to write my, I need the music. I'm, I'm trying to compose something. We're trying to work on something, a ballet that I'm, I, I can't choreograph it if I don't have the music. And he's like, well, well, show me what you're thinking, Jerry. Show, just show me a little bit of what you're thinking. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And so I have to start dancing. And, and oh my music. God. <laughs> Wait, that's amazing. It was though. awesome. It was a fun. really, really special experience. And he's a very, very exciting artist. Yeah. Yeah. It's really like a move. It's like a, it's like a film. You know, it is like, a film. It's yes. Like cinema. Yes, it is. I think it's my favorite. One of my favorite films I saw this year. Oh, that's great. Did you see Zone of Interest? Oh. Did you see that movie? Um, can you tell me about like an exciting? role that you did this last year tell me about marry me or marry me was this play that i did at the new york theater workshop got a great review in the times i was so bummed i like missed it it was very fun it was just it's high uh comedy lesbian sex farce about female pleasure set on a army base yeah so it was in the style of like restoration comedies and mash the television and That's it was true. super uh, sexy, super queer, super femme forward. It was very fun. 
love that. Uh, so yeah, it's this cool haircut. And it's like I was going to say, the haircut's very cool. I kept I'm it, feeling it. I kept it, but now it's at that length where like, if I lay a certain way, it all just starts Go. flopping this way. No, I think that's cool. <laughs> so I have to constantly like, roll oh, it, like, sure. a, yeah. like comb over it. I think you look very cool. Oh, thanks. I'm feeling it. Uh, but cool story with it? Let me think. Like, I, it just was a fun collaborative room it was it was oh. and we had worked on it for we had done a reading of it a 29 with a 29 hour play workshop do you know what those are like they no. you basically get a, a new play if a theater wants to do it okay or is considering doing it they have probably funds for these 29 hour workshops which means for about five days a, a director and a writer can put a cast together and okay. you'll come tuesday through saturday or something and rehearse it a few hours a day, and then usually at the end of it, it ends with like a presentation. Wow. So we did one of those about a year before we did it at New York Theatre Workshop, but that okay. was at the public theater. And then the public ended up it not working out there, and then we were able to do it at the workshop. We did another one of those kind of readings, and the entire cast was basically able to do it again. And then that cast was all, for the most part, asked to do the production so it was very fun and rare that a show can have this much development with the same that's six amazing. or seven people yeah and so with something like that's a high comedy you have to end up in the same play mm -hmm. or it's just not going to work and i think like this cast because we were able to be around each other we were able to like work for a week and then take a year away there was such trust and understanding and also we knew the tone of the piece pretty yeah. quickly because it was a weird tone it was i don't think a lot of people could click into it quickly without um help yeah that's so interesting so then because you had worked with them all for so long did it make leaving the show even more sad it made like, it very sad were you excited to well it was sad. <laughs> it was sad it's always sad to leave a show because it's it is yeah it's like it's a so dark to say but it is sort of like a, a small death you just mm -hmm. put these characters to bed you put these you put this like text chain to bed you yeah you know, are no longer texting the group is you you were like let's keep the text chain alive and you, you can't because you're it's like think about how many shows you've done and then film and tv it's like you yeah. would have like 800 families like, right and you, you also know, like, like yeah. it would be your full-time well, job yeah let's be realistic we have this one thing in common yeah and that thing is gone and so now and to talk about it is just to put salt on a wound and yeah there's always like a two to three week sadness cloud oh yeah it's like <laughs> a depression it, like yeah, it's, for it's a depression second. and if you like have the luxury of going on to something else sometimes that sadness is like comes later and mm -hmm. i don't think i'll ever get used to that feeling because it so even when it ended while it was fun because we had so much time with it, it still felt like not enough time. And, yeah. You know, you wonder if the right people saw it because I think it's a play that, you know, a lot, like particularly queer women said that they just have never seen a comedy that puts, you know, lesbians forward in a way that they could relate to. And so the people yeah. who started to find it. You hope it wasn't too late, like it that they got there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Mm. Okay, so can we talk about the process? I, I want to like chat some actory, like annoying stuff. Sure. <laughs> I'm curious, like when you get an email from your agent or manager with an audition, like what's the first thing you do? How do you feel? What, like, and now we have 48 hours because of SAG or, you know, I don't know what. Theater is, is often a week. Oh, like, so you have like time. More time with theater. But sometimes okay. it's not. But like they usually give you, because it's often sometime not, I don't know just generalizing it's can be like 12 pages yeah with no one having complaining about that because they get like a week i mean everyone complains about it but yeah, yeah. you still complain but the first thing you do is complain when you get an audition <laughs> you're like oh god the like, first thing is you get depressed <laughs> get depressed usually michael and i will like end up in a little like argument about like time and wait he, tell me oh my god please this is what i want to know especially as like a couple who are both actors like how you deal with this together like i'll get an email i get an audition and i'll be like and he'll be like what what happened what's wrong and i'm like <laughs> i got an audition he's like what for that's great and i'm like you know but it's he's like why are you why are you like immediately yeah. where one's high one's low and it reverses if it's him if he has to make a self-tape or something yeah he'll get frustrated about 
you know, uh, elements of that that I'll have to navigate and be like, it's okay, it's okay. And he's like, it's not okay, it's not okay. <laughs> 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 You're like, but it is okay. It's okay. no, fine. <laughs> I do think, I mean, I, I feel like I'm team self-tape, though, as opposed to, go, like, there's a lot of people, especially mm-hmm. actors in the theater, that, that are, like, I prefer self-tape. Me, oh, too, because sure. I'm such a perfectionist. I want to control the lighting. I want to, like, take my time. Yeah. Not feel rushed. It's more like shooting something. Totally. I mean, like, making your own self-tape is more like, going on set and shooting something than yes. going into a creepy office waiting in a waiting room with your competitors. I know. I hate that. And walking in and, a room. And, and people the... are like chatting like if people knew each other and you didn't know anyone and they'd yeah. be chatting and you'd be like, oh God, I'm like left out in this situation. People come out of a room and everyone's ha 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 ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, like, and you're like, they nailed it. They got it. Why am I here? Right. And, right. Yeah. and they're like, ha ha ha. Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you walk in, and sometimes, it's, it's, it's sometimes within like four seconds, everyone, including yourself, realizes this is not going to work out. Totally. And then you have to sit there and still do it for another five minutes yes. while everyone completely checks out. Yeah. It, or, or and yeah. it doesn't make you feel great about yourself. I mean, no. you leave and you're like, okay, I suck. Oh, gosh. Yeah, nothing no. about acting. Even when you play yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Even jobs that you end up getting, you walk out of a room thinking, oh, there's no way I got that. Or, totally. Oh, I was bad. Or, I mean, it's so... But when you can make your own, yes, you can take as long as you need, you can do the takes that you want, and you're sending off what you're, what you're satisfied with. And that, totally. that's a lot more like... And, and, and the process is so much more like what it's, what going it's actually be. going to be. You know, especially with TV and film. I mean, with, with theater, I get it. Like, maybe... A rehearsal needs to feel, I mean, a, an audition needs to feel more like a rehearsal. Right. Because you're kind of auditioning for the first day, not for the last day, which is like a shoot is like, you're making the thing. Yeah. You show, you're going to show up and make the thing that day. So you got to show them what you have. Yeah. You're kind of showing them your yeah. final product. Yeah. I also feel like going into a room should be reserved for if you're very seriously be considered. Yeah. Right. Like a chemistry read. Or yeah. yeah like or that. like a personality test with like the director, like even if you're not reading with another actor, but it should not be this sort of cattle call feeling, which is what it used to feel like. Yeah. So then when you get the audition though, do you like, what do you do with the script? Is like your first thing that you read the script? If you're lucky to get the script, do you like do beats? Like how do you do it? Do you just memorize it and try and get it out of the way? If it's a, if it's a pre-existing script like yeah. if this if the show existed and I didn't know it the first thing I do is google the like new york times review of the original production Interesting. And I, or whatever review and yeah. read sort of the dramaturgy of how this play was received okay and then I'll look for or I'll google the title and the character I'm auditioning for and see sort of how it landed within the context of the story that's very that's what smart. I do first. And who else has played it? Who else yeah, has played it? Like yeah. what kind of types and Okay. If it's a play. If it's a if it's T V or movie and also, I mean I think for any whether it's theater or T V or film, try to learn as much as you can about the people who are already working on it. Yeah. I feel like that's always really important. Yeah, which show who else Fine. is doing yeah. it, who was who wrote you know, who are the writers who's who's directed, who's been on it before. I have Just, a friend who auditioned for Kimmy Schmidt, mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite audition stories, but she did not do that. Uh-huh. She did not closely read all the names. Yeah. And for those who don't know what Kimmy Schmidt was, it was it was Tina Fey. Yeah. She was one of the main people creating that show. And my friend didn't see those two words, Tina and Fey. <laughs> and so it's this show about like a mole woman who comes out of the ground and sees life for the first time. So yeah. she went into the pilot audition like she was Meryl Streep in Sophie's Choice. Stop! Sobbing epically like seeing the world after all this pain and suffering living underground and then they ended the audition and they're like you did see that this said Tina Fey on it right and she's like I did not um <laughs> can wait. I have five minutes and she goes to the <laughs> lobby and had to like completely rethink it wait but that's she- actually I could think that that would be really funny in a Tina Fey thing because it's like right? talk about committing I think she just like- had like not comic oh, timing yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. energy and yeah. I think that that is something to figure out, like, what is the tone of the creator's normal Well, I will pieces. say one time that actually worked in my benefit <laughs> because my agent didn't send the script. 
And so I get to the room and I do what I thought was like a really funny scene. And I was like having fun. And then at the end, the casting director was like, did you read the script? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she was like, okay, it's just like no one came in here and made that scene a comedy considering it's like one of the most depressing scripts. But because my tip, like my tape was so different, I got the role. Oh my god! And gosh. I went home and I was like to my agents, I was like, "You didn't send the script," and they were like, "Oh, we didn't get it." And then they were like, "Oh shoot, we did get it. Sorry." But it actually worked in my wow. like my favor, which is crazy because I think everyone was playing into like sure. the drama and the sadness, and it's like finding the humor added like a balance yeah. to the rest of the script that they were missing. Wow. Sometimes I feel like I don't it's... really advise doing that. But, <laughs> I don't you know, know. I, sometimes I think for works. auditions, sometimes it's I don't know. I sometimes feel like it is best to not read certain things because mm-hmm. sort of the least the little you know, like these T V shows that give you no like if you're on a famous television show, totally. they just give you your scenes and you don't know what is happening. Yeah. And I think there is a there is a precedence for that being something that is helpful potentially for actors to not be able to get ahead of it Mm -hmm. but I think it is not advisable to not know like the show creators Mm -hmm. previous work or the writer of the movie's last film or versus necessarily saturating yourself in the new material yeah no I totally agree with that so then if you are frustrated like you were saying like do you with each other like how do you deal with that do you do like if you're feeling bummed about an audition or you're feeling depressed or just not inspired or how do you handle it yeah as a couple as a couple or even like separately is it something that you deal with separately i'm always just fascinated by two people who find each other who are both actors who are both working a lot like how do you balance that well we're really good at if one of us is low the other one won't allow themselves to go low yeah so like if i'm in a funk and he will he will rise above any funk he might have to Mm -hmm. sort of let me be in a funk Mm -hmm. because we're no good if we're both in a funk no this is true not about not just about acting this is true like about travel (laughs) you know like if one of us gets cranky at an airport yeah the other's like we got this. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Let's go. We're gonna get Starbucks. We're gonna get it. You know, like yeah. it's like, fun. Yeah. Right. Like, like it, it, we're good at that. It happened over New Year's. Oh, do you tell? What happened? Ooh, Brian doesn't remember. <laughs> we, we who was high? Who was low? <laughs> I was like, who was who was who? Well, we took a train to Philly to, uh-huh. s- to see a friend for New Year's. Oh, oh. And yes, yes, you yes. were like uh, all morning. <laughs> Tired and like, and, uh, and I was like, it's fine, it's fine, let's go. Okay, here we go. We're gonna take this train. And then we get there, and our train is delayed an hour, and all oh. the, the trains are delayed or canceled. No. And I was like, and there's a line of people uh, like, and I, to talk to. And I was like, and I'm doing this show right now, and I and I've got I'm really busy right now, and I was like, this is my only day off. I don't want to stand here all day. And so yeah. then I went low. Uh huh. And he was like. Let's get a burger, and it's like yeah. he, so like yeah. he took over. Yeah. But he had been, he had been basic, and I was like, it's fine, it's fine. He's tired or whatever, you know. He'll 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 relax. He'll get something to eat, and then he'll be he'll be fine later. But I was the one who was sort of like, okay, here we go, let's go, <laughs> yeah. gotta go on the subway, we gotta go, yeah. And then when I saw all the delays and the cancel, I was like, oh no, yeah, let's go home, yeah, <laughs> or let's rent a car, let's leave the business, yeah. <laughs> 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 and, and he, yeah, exactly. And he was like, "No, we got this. It's gonna be fine. Let's go." You know. Yeah. The burger helped. Sure. The sometimes burger food. Always, sometimes food always helps. helps. Do you guys get anxious anymore going into auditions or like the set for the first time? I mean, the term "going into audition," I haven't done. Well, that right. For That's true. Years, yeah, right? yeah. But uh, like, if you have like a Zoom call back, or you're going in for a read through for the first day with like a new whatever. Or are you over the nerves? For plays, I don't... I get nervous, but I don't get the same kind of nervous. For camera work, I sometimes do because I have less experience with that. Or I have less um, consistent experience with it. And... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had one in-person... I've had one in-person audition since, like, the shutdown in 2020. Wow. Yeah. And that 
was for what would be like a chemistry type thing. It was for a play, but it was like, there were only a few of us. So that felt a different kind of nerve because then that was more about getting the job versus not getting the job. Totally. Which is a different nerve than like, I don't even know if I'm right for this because there's mm -hmm. a thousand of us and I hope I stand out. Like that kind of anxiety is a different kind of anxiety. Yeah. I don't know, do you? Yeah, I mean, um, it's a, it, I guess it's different level, different kinds of things. Yeah, like there's there's like a, a sort of sort of a, it's a good kind of nervous. Yes. Yeah. That's you know kind of fun. Kind of that's, if you can harness it. Yeah, like exactly. That. Yeah. Like in in Spamalot, I have this very complicated song that's very wordy, mm -hmm. and I get a little bit nervous about that every night. But it's not that butterflies or that like dry up. Yeah. Thing. It's just like okay. Oh yeah. It's more like focus. Yeah. It's more like um breathe. Yeah. Because yeah. there's other parts of the show that I don't have to think about, but that I'm like, make sure you're really thinking here. You get the words right. Get the words right. Think ahead. Yeah. You know. Um. But. But first yeah, audiences. First audience thing. sometimes. Or like if yeah. there's a review coming out, like do you care? Do you try and read them? Not read them. Don't I'm read in them. Phases of reading and not reading. I usually read them eventually. You yeah. don't read them at all. I I or them. sometimes we'll read each other's and just sort of... Yeah, was it good? It's what did I, it say? I, I, what did yeah, it? I mean, yeah. inevitably you find out. So I sometimes like to know, is it good or not? Before somebody else tells you. Yeah. So you can like, just deal like, with the feelings like, together. Yeah. At home. Yeah, if no one emails you or texts you the next day, you know it was bad. <laughs> wow, well, that actually... <laughs> you're like... Okay, that makes sense. It's good. They're right. like people you haven't talked to in three months. Or yeah. Like, or yeah. three years. Congrats, we don't know. Yeah. 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 Or if it's a show that, like, with you know, if it's a, it's a Broadway show where the reviews are going to come out that later that night, mm -hmm. then you can just tell at the party. Totally. Right. If somebody, yeah. You know, oh, no one said anything about the reviews. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, <laughs> something else that I noticed that's funny is if there's, a good, if there's a good review, particularly in, like, the, time, the New York Times, it comes out the next day you'll get a couple emails of people being like hey is there a link to your show oh interesting and and if there yes. is not a good review that won't happen yeah. <laughs> they won't ask it. for it. people that this is an annoying thing that people will be like you can read the review <laughs> oh my god and what they don't realize is like it doesn't matter if it's a good review or a bad review they all mess with our heads yes you know, you know it's like, because it it might be a good review for you and right. not good review for you. Right. And if you're you, it will hurt your feelings if it's bad for him because it, it affects you. Right. Or it's good for us both, show. but a little better for you. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. you know, yeah. somebody was like, somebody, because the reviews were coming out while we were doing the opening night of Spam a lot, and somebody was like, four stars in time out. And I was like, not love. <laughs> that was my first thought. It's like this, this is why I don't read reviews. Yes. Of course, it's a great review. Yeah. Four stars is fantastic, but why that's not? that's the first place you go. Yeah, because there's a star that the person put on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, and you're like, why don't we get that's that one for your show? Right. <laughs> None just, of makes total sense. All. And I get it. I understand the need for criticism, and I and I respect critics, and I think it's uh, um I but I, it's just. I don't think that's for us. No. That's not, we're not going to change the show because of what no. a critic said. Unless you're doing it out of town and then doing it in town, maybe you would take some of what the critic says as constructive, but. Yeah, it's not, not that helpful. We're not doing it for them. That's yeah. for people to decide whether they want to come see the show or not. Yeah. That's not for us to. I do feel like the reviews just are across the board. Like when, when you think of like restaurant reviews or theater, like I feel like because social media has a greater presence now, I feel like the reviews matter a little less. Like they dictate whether or not a show, because in the past I feel like if a show didn't get a good review, it was closed the next week. Yeah. yeah. And now I feel like that happens less because there could be great reviews on social media. People yeah. are coming yeah. and loving it. Or there's great know? reviews and no one comes. Right. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't necessarily mean. Yeah. Yeah. I think certain kinds of shows do benefit from good reviews and certain kinds of, um, Certain kinds of reviews can help a show, but it's it's not the same as it was. It's not it seems like what's really good is if it's a tiny, a tiny like off, off, off Broadway type show that had a good yeah. press rep and it gets a great review in the Times. That might mean that that show can have a longer life yeah. or move to a little bit larger space. I feel like that's Helpful. what I've noticed. 
since COVID where reviews are really, really helpful is helping like the smaller stuff and yeah. they're less powerful with the extremely large machine shows. Right. That makes total sense. Oh, something I did think about. Oh my, oh, that please. was You want to add? Yes. Well, I was this is like a PS. I think that's something that we realized sort of late. We've been together 15 years and so oh my God. something we realized later in our relationship that I think is really helpful with like how do we deal with stress mm. when it comes up or how do we deal with whatever we can't go to each other for everything we have to also go to other people for certain things uh -huh. like there are certain friends that i will go to if i'm having a audition saga that i need to like unload on somebody i'll turn to my friend mallory i'll turn to my friend tessa i'll turn i'll turn to somebody who's not living with me who is wanting such the best for me in a way that's not actually helpful in this moment. Mm -hmm. What I need right now is to just complain. Yeah. I don't need to be helped. Mm -hmm. And I think for him it's similarly, like there's things that he'll take elsewhere because we're not the best at that mm -hmm. in certain moments for each other. I think you just said something really interesting though, because my partner and I talk about this a lot. It's like when your partner is going through something, your inclination is to help and to fix it because it makes you feel really sad when your partner is sad. Yeah. But like sometimes when you're the one going through it, it's not actually help that you need. You just need to be able to complain about it or cry or whatever, but there's actually nothing the other person can actually do. But listen. Being there is the help. Yeah. Yeah. Solving it is not the help. Yeah. But I always want to fix it. Yeah. Let me so, solve this. Because it pains you. Like, yeah. it actually physically pains you when your partner yeah. is sad. Yeah. And there are times when I think we also realize, like, I've got this thing going on. You've got that thing going on. And I'm not going to burden you with my thing mm. right now. And vice versa. Because, yeah. because I know that it'll, I know that you'll take it all on. Mm hmm yeah, there would be times where I'll, like, back when we used to go to auditions, I would walk out and be like, oh, this was terrible. I'd text him, like, this was terrible. I feel awful. I don't even know what to do. I don't, I'm going to walk home. Yeah. I don't oh, want to take a train. I'm just so sad. And he'll be like, I'm so sorry, babe, and this is awful, and I don't know what to do, but, like, I'm literally about to start shooting something. This is a lot to read uh -huh. right before I'm doing my take. Uh-huh. Are you okay? Please yeah. tell me you're okay. And then suddenly I was like, why did I text him that? Like, yeah. Why didn't I just walk yeah. it off or call my friend who could actually meet me versus unloading it on him. Oh, and I think like totally figuring that out. out over the years has been really helpful, would you say? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> no, it's like so, yeah, helpful. You know, we've also worked together. We've been in plays together and, and, and you guys have like a company together, right? Or is we, that uh, we've made some things together. So oh, okay. like company, yeah. We've we've like produced things together and okay. and um but like, you know, when you're in a play together and you rehearse all day and like maybe it wasn't such a great day or you know, right. like ran into some issues or something's not working. It's hard you have to like remind yourselves to like let it go mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Like I mean like we come home at night, I don't wanna keep rehearsing. Yes. You know, I don't yeah. want to. Or even just talking about it. I'm right. sure it's like, let's just watch something like that has nothing to do with yeah. what we're doing right now. Right. We also have a good indicator of, of how the house is. We have a dog that's mm -hmm. very nerdy. Okay. And she, if one of us is a little stressed, she'll like come to one of us and sort of sit and sort of quietly shake. She can feel it. She can feel it. And so yeah. sometimes we'll be talking and it'll start to rise in tension. And it's not usually rarely between us it's about right. something else that we could in theory stop right. talking about and she'll come over to one of us and just sort of shake and we'll see her and then we'll start to like calm, calm down, down. Yeah. wow yeah. that's really like sweet sometimes she's, though she's gonna have a stroke yeah <laughs> <laughs> sometimes though it's like i i'm sorry that she's upset but i'm upset too yeah. and i'm not i can't just shake it off because yes. because of her yeah She's she's, yeah. she's just a dog. Like, yeah. put her in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> She'll fall asleep and forget this ever happened. But, that is but true. It, but it is a good indicator of like, okay, maybe we're what the temperature in the room. Overreacting. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. You guys, this thank you lovely. so much. This is so fun. Thank you. Thank you.